Okay, so now we're getting ready for the uh, clear the to smooth down the insides. You see all these ledges here, just like we did on the outside. We now want to smooth off the ones on the inside. Got this piece right here where I spliced in some. I'm going to take that down as well, and that's why you want the type of shore form that has the handle like this. As I said before, they they come. You can get the one from Harbor Freight. You can have the handle either way. You simply loosen the screw, flip the handle around. Now you have one that works more like a bench plane. Um, and I like to actually hold it backwards like this so that I have the pressure against my arm and my hand. And work it down like that because it. You can't use the power plane on the inside. It just won't fit in here correctly. And with this stuff, I like to call, I call it the beard because it, it looks kind of like a beard kind of growing out. But dealing with that, it's often better to go ahead and just snap off any of it that you can because it tends to resist the rasp digging into it. So you can just take it off in chunks like that. And this is where your flat blade screwdriver can actually come in kind of handy for digging them out to try and get it down to something easier to smooth off. Because you don't want to have these on your finished build. And this one is worse than normal. Like if you look over here and you see how these are stacked, normally in the middle, that's what your hollow is going to look like all the way down. And the, this one is the only one you're really going to see an edge and then all the rest will be lined up with this one. This is an experiment. And, and we'll see how it turns out, but I don't think I'm ever going to build this way again. But just wanted to show you guys what I'm doing. So we continue to work down the edges here, get this boat ready to wrap. Another good tool that I found that works pretty well, this is an aluminum, just an ice cream scoop, cheap one. Doesn't have the antifreeze in the handle or any of it like some of them do. Um, but got a fairly sharp edge and it's hooked and for doing the ends like right here you can actually dig pretty nicely in there that'll help the fabric go around that corner when you're laying it here into the cockpit. Just another one of the tools, also it's good, let's say maybe down here in the cargo compartment, you think, I got a little bit too much foam in here, I'd like to dig that out. This is the perfect tool for that. You can use that to just cut away a little bit off the edge. I don't bother with cutting the, the uh, ledges out inside the hatches it's never seemed to me to be a big issue in fact I think it may give a little bit more strength to have a little more foam there so I just leave it but this will allow you like in my first boats I left a lot of foam in the ends and later on I went back and this is really dumb so I went and I just carved out with this and you can actually get a pretty good scoop each time um, and dig into it fairly quickly and the nice the curve the hook is the trick that makes this such a good thing and also the sides you can actually use to dig with them as well um, so just another tool and I mean I don't know where this I, I found this somewhere but I'm sure they're like dollar store who knows what you can find what you're looking for it'll do the trick so as you can see as I've been taking it down smoothing it out this part I want more or less vertical <clears throat> this part is going to have more of the flare to it um, and obviously I'm looking at things like how thin this section is right here. 
um, it's fairly thin, but I'm finding I can't, I can't make it like push, you know, I'm pushing with my thumb, I can't make it bulge, and that is usually what I go for, for the idea of how strong that section of the hull is, because if you can push it and watch it flex easily with your thumb, that means you made it too thin, you need to glue a piece of foam on there, thicken it up a little bit. This is where you take your scraps, the pieces from the trash. Um, you know, mix this stuff with glue and kind of pack it in there. Uh, a variety of different things you can do to thicken up a certain area, depending on the size and gaps and whatever. But as you see, just going along the hull, taking the um, sure form and just working same as we did on the outside, working it on an angle. You see the angle of this handle here. And don't have to go crazy. I mean, I don't even care that this right here makes kind of a square angle before it hits the bottom. Because you'll see when we get to that part that you're going to lay your canvas. I always use canvas for the cockpit floor. Give a little bit more reinforcement for standing and dropping things on here. Some people, when they're building the fishing ones in particular, they like to put plywood down. If you want to do it, go for it. I've never seen that the hull is too weak if you're using two inch foam, especially the blue. The blue is a little bit tougher than the pink. Um, but they'll put plywood down because they think standing on it to cast will put dents in the floor. Yeah, I don't think it's necessary. But that's why I use a layer of canvas and really soak it good with paint. Plus it makes a really excellent anti-skid surface. You don't have to add sand or salt or sugar or any of the other things that people do to uh, give yourself an anti-skid. Canvas, as long as it isn't completely filled with paint, makes an excellent anti-skid surface that still cleans up pretty well. It's not going to really keep the dirt if you scrub it a little bit with a scrub brush. Um, and basically, I'm going to lay that canvas in, and I only bring the canvas up to about here, just for that first part, and then the rest gets the, I use just cotton bed sheets for uh, the skin that goes on the inside and the outside. And your plywood rail here um, can keep you from blowing the rails out or falling against it and cracking right through the side. But in reality, the fabric is the strength, and the whole reason for this experiment is to see how thin can we go with the foam before we have a problem. And we're gonna find out with this hull. I'm kinda of wondering if I dare to do the stand on it test, or stand in it test, that I did with the first sawfish, and that I did with the first 16 foot tandem. That's the big long red one. There's a picture of me standing on top of that, straddling two 55 gallon drums, under one under each end. And the first sawfish is two sawhorses and me sitting in the cockpit right here in the middle. So this one's going to be a little bit different. Stay tuned, because I have to do it just to see. Because if it won't hold me in here, I'm not going to let anybody go out on the water on it. And that was one of the things all along. I wanted to make sure these were entirely safe before I said, yeah, go ahead and make one and go paddle. Just don't go off Niagara Falls or something. But I just wanted to make sure if you're going over waves, through rapids that the flexing and whatever of the water wouldn't cause the boat to break. So I'm going to have to do the stand on it test. We'll see. So just showing you, I mean, this isn't a hundred percent perfect, but for an inside of a cockpit, I'm happy with it. I don't think that it's really quite as critical to make it look as smooth on the inside as the outside. Since it's just, you want it smooth enough that you can put fabric on is really all you care about. Um, and then I still got the other side to do. But if you think this is bad, I haven't found a power tool that will do this part of the job, or I would use one. Uh, but if you think this is bad, just imagine over there, the bottom of the stack, sawfish number one. I did the whole hull with a sure form. I didn't have... The power I had the power plane but I hadn't thought of using it yet um, so you want to talk about hours of work to shape something it's always a viable thing to do if you don't have the power tools or you'd like to spend the time but 
Definitely works better. I know people have suggested other tools like a disc sander, belt sanders. You can use those, but you got to watch it because they go fast. And with foam, this is a soft material. It's not like wood. You're going to end up cutting through stuff pretty quick.